we can summarize the evidence for a gravitational collapse and compare it with the one for controlled demolitions. The official explanation for the initial collapse, or sagging trusses theory, is fundamentally flawed for at least three reasons. There is no evidence that the fireproofing was widely dislodged from the steel trusses, no evidence for temperatures high enough to seriously weaken the steel, and no valid explanation on how the trusses could have pulled and broken the external structure on their own. At the same time, the initial collapse is fully compatible with a controlled demolition. The official explanation for the total collapse of the Twin Towers does not exist, nor was a scientific calculation ever attempted by NIST, as they have repeatedly acknowledged. At the same time, the full collapse of the buildings is fully compatible with a controlled demolition. The vertical acceleration of the upper sections to near free-fall speed makes it impossible to explain the collapses by gravitation only, without violating at least two fundamental laws of physics. At the same time, the near free-fall acceleration achieved by the collapsing towers is fully compatible with a controlled demolition. A free-fall time would be an object that has no uh, structural components below it. The measurements have indicated that Tower 1 collapsed in about 11 seconds and Tower 2 collapsed in about 9 seconds. This is essentially the rate at which free-fall would happen. The amount of witnesses who reported powerful explosions and the ensuing devastation in the Twin Towers is overwhelming. Such explosions cannot be explained by jet fuel alone, while they are fully compatible with a controlled demolition. John McLaughlin was a police officer for the Port Authority. Going into Tower 1, we heard a loud explosion coming from the area of Building 2, and at that point, Building 2 was collapsing. We saw the top begin to blow out in a plume of smoke, and we heard the noise uh, associated with an implosion. I was about five blocks away when that, uh, I heard uh, explosions, three thuds, and turn around to see the building we just got out of, antenna tip over and fall in on itself. And then all of a sudden, three tremendous explosions, and everything started coming down. Then there was a tight sequence of detonations during the collapse of the South Tower. As the first tower came down, there were a series of explosions. It was like boom, boom. You could hear the echoes of the explosions echoing off the different buildings. The uh, detonation started, and they went boom, boom, boom. They were a little less than a second apart. Below the fire, I saw from the corner, boom, 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 boom. Just like 20 straight hits. Just yeah, because they were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. So it was like boom, 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 boom. From far away, boom, boom and you heard the boom, 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 boom. The same kind of detonations were heard during the collapse of the North Tower. Second tower number one, the second tower collapsed. It was the exact, exact same series of detonations. And then it started to sound like firecrackers. Crack, 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 crack. And we looked up and the second tower was coming down. The squibs observed 30 and 40 floors below the level of collapse cannot be explained by the air pressure in a gravitational collapse. At the same time, squibs are the typical signature of controlled demolitions. Not all the diagonal cuts and V-cuts observed on the columns at ground zero can be explained by the removal operations. At the same time, these kind of cuts are another typical signature of controlled demolitions. The large area of debris around the towers, with the lateral ejection of elements weighing several tons, cannot be explained by a gravitational collapse. At the same time, these ejections are fully compatible with the use of powerful explosives. The long-lasting fires, it took until December 19, more than three months after the collapses, for the last underground fire to be extinguished. The extreme temperatures under the rubble. In an article called A Dangerous Worksite, the U.S. Department of Labor wrote, underground fires burned at temperatures of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This was confirmed by Mayor Giuliani. There were fires of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit below the ground. The Journal of the American Society of Safety Engineers wrote, Thermal measurements taken by helicopter each day showed underground temperatures ranging from 400 to more than 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. And molten steel was repeatedly found under the rubble at ground zero. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, like little... molten steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like lava. Like, like, like lava. lava from a volcano. The fires got very intense down there and actually melted 
beams where it was molten steel that was being dug out. The incandescent beams extracted during the cleanup, the high degree of deformation of massive steel beams, the molten steel and molten concrete observed and found at ground zero cannot be explained by jet fuel alone, nor by regular office fires. Highly effective destructive devices capable of developing extremely high temperatures must have been used as part of a controlled demolition. The almost complete pulverization of the contents of both towers, from the concrete floors to the office furnishings to the actual vaporization of victims' bodies, cannot be explained by a simple gravitational collapse. At the same time, these results are fully compatible with the presence of powerful explosives, such as those used in controlled demolitions. <clears throat> this this manual right here, just so you can see it, is what we call the the kind of the fire investigation 101. This is the most basic fire investigation manual there. This is for the 2001 edition. This is what should have been referred to at least. It doesn't have to be followed exactly, but it should have been used as a guideline for the investigation. I'm just going to cover a few of the things that are in here. 19.2.4, exotic accelerants. If, the, if on the scene you find melted steel or concrete, you should consider the use of exotic accelerants. And they specifically say in the manual, thermite mixtures produce exceedingly hot fires that can account for melted steel and concrete. That also says they leave residues that will, can be tested for visually and chemically identifiable. <clears throat> Again, they did not test for it. And pulverized concrete, which we all know there was in all three buildings there was pulverized concrete. <clears throat> The only fuels that can create seeded explosions should be considered. So they shouldn't be considering fires. They shouldn't be doing that. It doesn't account for pulverized concrete. They should only be considering exotic ex accelerants and explosives. In the dust, we found what we characterize as unreacted thermitic material in the shape of some very tiny red-gray chips, which have different properties. Most importantly is they're still reacting, some of them, and uh, in the reaction they produce molten iron, which is the prime indication of a thermitic reaction. And such a reaction can be used to destroy steel structures. What we have found is a modern version of thermite, which we call nanothermite, which is produced in a different way. It is not just two powders being mixed. The material is actually built from the atom scale up. We call it the bottom up procedure, which is what you do in nanotechnology. The ingredients are much smaller, which means they are reacting faster and they are more easily ignited. One of the things I'd like to stress about these chips is that they uh, really shouldn't be there. They're not uh, a natural formed um, agglomeration of aluminum from the aircraft or materials that were in the building and iron oxide that got knocked off. It isn't just a haphazard bringing together of iron oxide and aluminum, which is the basic components of thermite. This is a material that um, is made up of nano-sized particles that are all very uniform, very symmetrical. This cannot be paint. Paint does not have these exotic properties. It's impossible. There was actually some significant findings in the residue. After igniting these chips in the DSC, we found uh, microspheres. But the significance of the, of the calorimeter cannot be uh, understated here. Many of these spheres had the exact or identical composition or very similar composition as the spheres that Steve was finding in the dust samples. They were also very similar to spheres found in thermite, in commercial thermite. There were no microspheres found in, in the paint sample that had been ignited in the DSC. Um, we also took paint that came off of the WTC steel and looked at that in the SEM and, and did a compositional analysis of that and found that it was not similar to the red-gray chip or the red layer of the red-gray chips. So it wasn't, the red-gray chips are not the primer paint that was used on the WTC steel. This is material that is, uh, is of military use that really shouldn't be there. So thermite, if it was uh, present at the World Trade Center and created this molten metal that uh, so many witnesses and uh, photographic evidence shows, would also explain potentially the fact that the fires could not be put out at ground zero. 
The fires lasted for quite a while, but um, most importantly, they were um, deep within the pile where people would expect that it, the environment was oxygen starved. And uh, thermite could explain this because it has its own oxidant within. It's actually the uh, metallic oxide that provides the oxidant to allow the uh, incendiary thermite reaction to occur, even underwater. Unless a comprehensive, scientifically sound explanation for all the phenomena observed is presented, the only conclusion available is that the Twin Towers were brought down by some form of controlled demolition.